What's up everyone? Curtis Wolfing here of Millspec Manufacturing and a few days ago I got my first 3D printer. <laughs> I really thought it was going to be a pain. test part done as you can see and since then I have been busy so like I was saying all right I've been busy <laughs> you know like the first first couple prints and trying to get used to the studio and 3d printing itself because I'm a novice all right it's my first one um, I uh, printed out some stuff that's already been pre-designed okay so buddy of mine Joe from random fabrication he sent me the files to create these trays. So I'd be able to actually take these trays and or organize my toolboxes and my tool trays and so they're not such a mess and disorganized or packed in there. They're actually like, as you can see, they're visible. You can see what they are, how many I have left. Much easier to work with. As well as these tool tags as well. Uh, somebody on Maker World designed these already. Uh, cat 40 tool tags so when you're running a machine my machine only has 20 tool pockets all right but I have a hundred offsets in that machine so I can have a hundred tools assigned to that machine with this all the excess tools that I would have outside of those 20 tool pockets I could have sitting out on shelves like these and labeled so I would be able to know this tool is this offset and so I'd be able to organize and keep track of things that way as well but I found out that uh, I printed this this is a tool holder bracket right but there wasn't a tool holder bracket for this tool tag all right because when you put the tool tag onto the tool holder I'll just show you I'm a visual guy as you can see that overlaps all right so what I did was you know just get my feet wet into the designing and 3d printing space I 3d printed one and I got it you know all right but I wanted a little bit more space in between and instead of it being 90 degrees like that and the tool tags only facing upward when you're looking at it from a wall standpoint, you want it to be pitched forward so you can see the tool tag and be able to read all the information on there. So, redesigned it. Now, that looks a, much, a lot better. All right. Not only that, with it going against the wall, it would be able to see the tool tag information on there. So, being able to get my feet wet, you know, do a little design work. All right, and on top of that, I was also doing drill bit holders as well. So be able to keep those organized and be able to pick them out, make sure I have an inventory of them. But what's a really cool thing is the aspects of prototyping with a 3D printer. All right, that bringing rapid prototyping into my shop helps out a lot. Like you guys know, I have a, a product that I designed and uh, manufactured in-house was duty clips for uh, sheriff's department all right for sheriffs that have uh, their otter boxes to you know clip onto their duty belts because they never get issued that so as you guys can see we went through that stage before and we outsourced it to be 3d printed now we can do it in-house and we won't have to worry about you know shipping timelines lead times everything do it in-house and we got the male part done now we're because we're able to do it in-house we're going to be doing the female part all right so let's go over here and check out the printer while it's printing right now all that one finishes up
awesome thing about being able to do this in house is because when that is done uh, for the female part we'll be able to test them out immediately right here now like we do with these ones see if it was if it would fit if there was any adjustments needed if that one was a little tight that would mean adjustments went on better And then, for the finale, final part. You can do the all in house on your own time. So, as you guys can see, with having 3D printing in house, you know, for prototyping, you'd be able to do testing for form, fit, and function before loading that spindle up and costing a prototype a lot more, okay? <laughs> and it, it does get addicting, all right? Having this whole nother world, you know, of design and prototyping capabilities. But the next thing I want to uh, get into is the 3D printing actual soft jaws, all right, for the mill. So instead of having to, you know, cut material and do all that work, just have them 3D printed directly to the profile of the part. So, you know, that'd be that'd be pretty cool. I mean, I could I couldn't couldn't recommend enough to get a 3D printer for any shops, all right? Because it again, it's addicting. So, but thanks again guys for enjoying this episode with me on becoming a practical machinist. I hope to see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.